Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, we're talking about an upcoming rally for peace in Washington, D.C. on March 18th. We are fortunate to have two guests with us. Jody Evans is co-founder of Code Pink. You can find it at codepink.org. And she is the founder of China Is Not Our Enemy. Uh, Joe Lombardo is coordinator of UNAC, United National Anti-War Coalition. You can find it at UNAC, U-N-A-C, peace.org. Uh, Jody and Joe, welcome to Talk World Radio. Thanks, David. Uh, thanks to both of you for coming on and for what you're doing, planning for March 18th. Uh, Jody, do you want to go first? What is what is happening basically on the 18th of March? Well, the 18th of March is also the 20th anniversary of the uh, U.S. war in Iraq. So we decided on that anniversary in the middle of, uh, you, you know, Congress still escalating more weapons to and talking about a large military budget, that we needed to be in Washington saying no to war. So um, we called, uh, um, we started with um, Answer and the People's Forum and Code Pink. We we're like, okay, we've got to do something and um, call for uh, a, a march on March 18th, one o'clock outside the White House. And um, since then, over a hundred groups have joined in of which um, we've got Joe here. <laughs> Want to add to that, Joe? Well, um, I think one of the key things is that we've put together a real good coalition of progressive organizations um, and we're meeting on a weekly basis with uh, the Answer Coalition and Code Pink and UNAC and Black Alliance for Peace and um, uh, People's Form and uh, um, Popular Resistance. Um, and we all are pushing really hard in the same direction, which is something that a lot of people in the progressive movement and the left thought is an impossible task. And I, I believe Jody has understated the number of um, endorsers we have now. We have over 200, and they're a very broad range of um, organi progressive organizations, peace organizations, um, uh, groups like the DSA International Committee, a number of others, uh, World Beyond War. Um, and uh, I think it looks to be uh, perhaps uh, the one of the strongest anti-war demonstrations in a long time that we'll see in um, Washington, D.C. And besides being the 20th anniversary, what should be very clear is we're in the midst of um, this war in Ukraine, which is kind of the center of world politics right now. It brings up issues of possibility of nuclear war. U.S. has played a major role as, as financing it, and, and we in the United States, as people in Europe have been protesting against this war, need to start protesting it, and I think this is a very good step. Well, and, and, our, and our key demands are, yes, peace in Ukraine, which is, you know, negotiations, not escalation, abolish NATO and U.S. militarism and sanctions, fund people's needs, not the war machine, no war with China, end U.S. aid to racist apartheid Israel, fight racism, bigotry at home, not other peoples, U.S. hands off Haiti and end Africon. So those are the key demands that, yes, over 200 groups have agreed to come together around. Very good. When, when we say a march in Washington, is it a march from a place to a place or is it just a rally at the White House? Where, where should people show up? What should they do and how can they find out and get involved? Well, they should show up at, uh, at one o'clock or before because we can use all the help we can get getting set up. Um, right outside the White House, we have a, a permit at Lafayette Park. We'll have stage and sound. And then we'll you know, be rallying. We have um, lots of great speakers, obviously always too many speakers. Um, and um, then we'll march from there. And we're going to go to a, another, we're going to march to another location and we're not revealing yet the march path. But um, We'll march to another location where uh, we'll have also another gathering of speakers and music and poetry. So it's all, all afternoon. But I think the other really important thing is we have over 
40 cities where transportation is being organized from, and you can find that transportation at um, either of the emails you put out, Joe's email or, or um, those websites, Joe's website, my uh, Code Pink's website, Answers website, People's Forms website, go to them both on all the front pages of every one of the partners website is information about the March and Rally and a whole page on transportation from uh, hopefully your city. And then if you're not in the East Coast, we also have uh, Chicago, Detroit, San Francisco, LA. Uh, Joe, I, what, do you remember any of the other cities? Um, there'll be something happening in um, Minneapolis, uh, in Maine, um, one or two other places. And, and those are listed on the various websites as well, right? Correct. And did, do we want to say who some of the speakers will be that can be people can expect to hear from or not? I think what we're saying is that there are voices representing each, you know, the, some of the main organizers. Um, besides Chomsky, I think that's the only thing we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Noam Chomsky actually in the New York Times this week for the first time uh, in I don't know how long, but on issues related to language, not war. Um, so why? Yeah, why, you know, let's talk about that. You know, the, the, the mainstream media will not, not only will they not reveal the costs of war, whether they're local, whether they're in their communities, um, but they're, you know, they just never talk about the cost of war or allow peace voices on their pages. Uh, Absolutely right. Uh, Joe, we've we've just seen uh, the Congress vote for more war in Syria, not a single Democrat speaking for a single second for peace, uh, and a proposal of what may turn out to be the biggest military budget uh, in history, uh, or at least since World War II uh, on this planet without uh, any serious voice for peace in opposition uh, in the Congress. Uh, what is this? What, what is going to turn this around? Um, well, um, first of all, we did add another demand to the demands list, and that is to end the sanctions against Syria during this period of uh, uh, the um, earthquake that took place there and a lot of aid that's needed. And during this period, uh, U.S. ally Israel actually bombed uh, the airport in Aleppo where a lot of the aid was coming through. Um, which actually stops uh, some of this aid. Um, and what's going to stop the Congress? I, I don't believe um, personally, and there's different people um, in the peace movement with different ideas, that by pleading with some of these people, it's going to help. What I think we need to do instead is build an independent movement, and uh, we can put pressure on people through that independent movement um, it needs to be vocal and it needs to be in the streets. Um, uh, there's a lot of podcasts that are going on. There's a lot of online stuff, but we need to get back to the point where we are in the streets, where we are visible and people can see there is some opposition because we don't get the coverage. There is more. I've been around for a very long time in the peace movement. I was a staff person in one of the coalitions that organized during the Vietnam War period. And I have never seen censorship and never seen propaganda to the extent that we're seeing it now in the media. So it is only by an independent voice that we're going to um, let people know that there are others that think like they are. And there are places such as Washington, D.C. on March 18th that they can come to and join together with others and make a difference. And I think that's the way we will make a difference. Joe, you're so right. I mean, what what's really missing is the visibility of peace and and listen, and hearing it and we hear it from members of congress they say we're all we're hearing are you know more weapons more weapons we're not hearing the voices for peace and it's always the people that move congress but they've got to, it's you've got to make them uncomfortable you've got to remind them that they're warmongers nobody's holding a mirror up to them and saying you're killing people um so it it you know we're in the Congress almost every day lobbying. And it's it's disheartening. 
what they think, what they believe, how brainwashed they are. It's very disheartening, but that's all they're getting is the brainwashing. We think, you know, the general public gets it pretty bad, but they've just got the military walking, the military contractors walking the halls of Congress every day, telling them more weapons, more weapons, more weapons and frightening them. And so we're, you know, we have to be in the streets. You're so right, Joe. This is why we need to be in the streets on March 18th, because peace is invisible and it's not being heard. And so um, we, that's why we're calling for this is like, let's show that there's an anti-war movement because if we don't have a visible anti-war movement, they're not gonna feel uncomfortable. They're not gonna be reminded that war and weapons kill people. And um, they destroy the, the, they destroy countries. Um, and we, they don't, you know, the media doesn't talk about what's happened to the, the Middle East since 20 years since this war on Iraq. First of all, you know, we've spent, the United States has spent $21 trillion on war and weapons. Um, 30, I, last I saw it was 38 million refugees in the last 20 years from what we've done to the Middle East and destroyed countries, Libya, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan. Um, you know, this, why don't we see the consequences of what we've done. And then all we hear is they're making monsters out of other people um, in the media that have done far less, not to approve anyone dropping bombs on anyone. But why don't people in the United States know what has been done with their tax do dollars to people around the world? Well, I think we know it's because people like Joe Lombardo and Jody Evans don't own television networks. Uh, they have to come on shows like mine. Uh, but if you did, uh, what do you think? I mean, if we could take over CNN nonviolently for 30 seconds, what do you think people don't know? Because there are millions and millions of people out there who will say, as they always do, oh, you're right about every war that's over two years old, but not the current one. The current one is the good one. Uh, it, tourists at the White House on March 18th. So what are you people doing here? What do you tell them? What do you think they don't know that that they or misunderstand or have been misled about um, that, that causes them not to get engaged? Well, the United States has a military budget which grows each year um, with each successive budget. Uh, that is around 45% of the um, military budgets of all countries in the world combined. Um, it has its military in bases all over the world. In fact, the United States has 20 times the number of foreign military bases as all other countries in the world combined. The country with the second the highest military base in uh, uh, um, uh, foreign military bases is Britain, the U.S. ally, and the one with the third most um, foreign military bases is France. These are left over from their imperial past. The United States is the main imperialist country, the main cause of war all around the world. And we in the United States have, in the belly of the beast, as Che Guevara said, have a special responsibility um, to the people of the world to make sure that stops. We have to build this anti-war movement. It's um, the most important thing we can do. And I think people don't know this. People think that they that the U.S. goes around the world um, for altruistic reasons to help people. And this simply is not the case. Even the money we say we're spending on this um, Ukraine war is money that goes right back to uh, the military industrial complex in, in the United States um, to kill more people and so forth. During this whole period of inflation and recession caused by the sanctions that we've imposed on, on Russia, um, the only companies that are making money are the uh, energy companies, the oil companies, and the military companies. And they seem to bring up the economy so it looks like it's not really uh, um, uh, collapsing as bad as it is. In Europe, it's very much more noticeable, the high inflation and the unemployment, and that's why we're starting to see a lot more protests in Europe. A number of governments are in real trouble in Europe. Some have fallen, um, and uh, we need to start the same kind of movement, make connections with the people in Europe, and um, make the same kind of movement in the United States, and I think uh, March 18th is a 
big step towards that. Well, David, you know, one of the things, and it's it's kind of where Code Pink was started 20 years ago, was I think what happens is quite intentionally the the U.S. propaganda machine frightens. They they lie and frighten the American people, and I think when they frighten them, which is when we started Code Pink. Um, Bush was frightening the American people with code orange, code red, and code yellow, and we called code pink for peace. Once you've got people afraid, then you they go in and they hook in their empathy and their compassion. I say they literally weaponize their compassion to drive to war, and that's sick. That's really sick. But what what we find as we we go around and talk about um, this war on Ukraine. It's a thin veneer because it's so wrong. It's so based on, I mean, it's it's so upside down that once you start to turn a person back up, you know, it's like, wait a sec, we've had, did weapons help Vietnam? Did they help Korea? Did they help Iraq? Did they help Afghanistan? What don't you understand about weapons kill people? Or what don't you understand that this is a proxy war between Russia and the US and they're using Ukrainians? So if you care about Ukrainians, you need to be calling for diplomacy as soon as you give them some facts and 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 an alternative an alternative to weapons and war they don't get an alternative and look we work so hard to get those 30 members of congress to say you know biden call for diplomacy and you know i i it it's sad on one level that that got all that pushback but on another level, we do letters to Congress all the time from members of Congress. We we do letters to Biden and they never get media. The only reason this letter got media was the conflict between the members of Congress. And then finally, actually, diplomacy got talked about, but for a very like thin week. And, and that when you don't give people an alternative, when they're dumbed down, first of all, in our education system, and then in the media, and all the media, the media makes the American people so dumb. And what's really sad is they don't understand the manipulation of their own mind. And I think back when I was working in that anti-nuke movement back in the 90s, someone did a study and it, they said that um, in Russia, 95% of the Russian news about the United States is propaganda. In the United States, 95% of the news is propaganda about Russia, but, what the report showed, and it was like a mainstream report, was that in Russia, people knew they had propaganda and the United States people didn't know they had propaganda. So the problem is, is in the United States, people believe the propaganda that's coming out of the mainstream media. They don't understand they're being manipulated and they're being ma ma criminally manipulated. Their hearts, their compassion, and their empathy is being weaponized for war. And where, where I saw this three years ago was on China. I had been, you know, posting on my Facebook, you know, all these beautiful photos and trips I was taking to China. And everybody said, oh, that looks great, amazing. I can't wait to go to China. And then all of a sudden, like that, it was like, oh, China's our enemy and they're bad. And I'm like, what? And I look at the media and it's the exact same playbook of Iraq. It's all happening at the same place. They're all saying the exact same thing. It's all driven by nobody that you've ever heard of before that's funded by the NED and they're driving hate on China. And you know, the first casualties of that are Asian Americans, that that hate happens in the United States. And that's not just Asian Americans, but it's now driving globally hate, another crime. So it's one of our issues on March 18th is that you know, China is not our enemy, that once a war starts, they're very hard to stop, as we can see right now. And, you know, you can't even drive people to the the negotiating table. But here's a war we can stop. And right. it, it's already affected, you know, Taiwan just got rid of its last leader, because she invited Nancy Pelosi over and they said, we do not want to be Ukraine. And they elected a new leader in Ukraine, in um, Taiwan, that has gone to China and said, you know, we agree with the one China policy. Biden, wink, wink, has said he agrees with the one China policy while they are destroying ecosystems in the islands around China. They've already surrounded with 250 bases. They're violating the human rights of the people on these islands. 
And um, so, you know, we the war in Ukraine is about breaking a breaking a promise. Um, uh, it, it is. I, I I think what helps a lot of people is knowledge of specific alternatives, right? On Iraq, the inspectors could have been allowed to do the inspecting. Uh, Bush could have accepted the deal where Saddam Hussein gets a billion dollars and leaves. Uh, I mean, you don't want to give some ugly thug a billion dollars, but look at the trillions and trillions spent slaughtering innocent people. How was that better, right? People don't know, I think, that there was a build up to the war in Ukraine like there's currently a build up to a war with China, which we will be told we're supposed to forget. It's our duty to forget there was this build up if the war happens. And people don't know, I think, that the United States has sabotaged negotiations for peace in Ukraine. They think peace in Ukraine is not a possibility, so you have to win the war in Ukraine. Uh, do you, is there a way, uh, Joe and, and Jody, that we can communicate to people uh, that there's actually an alternative to this side wins or that side wins? Well, I think we have to just keep on doing it. Um, uh, I don't think there's any magic formula on how we're going to convince all the people. And I think circumstances will start um, also changing people's minds, um, as again, as it is um, more forcefully in Europe, where they're being affected more by the economic consequences of the war um, and uh, the money that's going into the war and the inflation and unemployment that's happening, as well as just the moral outrage at the incredible number of deaths that have happened uh, in, in that war. And in the context of people starting to question it, which they are, polls are showing that almost 50% of the United States now, despite the propaganda and despite the censorship, um, uh, are now saying that we shouldn't be uh, sending more weapons and money to Ukraine. Um, that's a hard position to take when you're not given any other facts. But in the context of this changing um, consciousness, um, what we are saying, I think, will get a bigger audience. And that's why it's important to keep on pushing each time we can, like on this March 18th, going a little further than we've been able to do before. UNAC, in the past several months, organized two sets of um, local demonstrations, the first one right before the elections in October, and we had about 70 actions around the country. The next one in January um, uh, had over 90 actions around um, the country. And now we're coming together for a national demonstration. And th there's talk within the coalition that we've had. We, It doesn't stop here. We have to continue. We have to show that we can work together, despite the fact that we might have some differences on some aspects of this. I think we all come from the same place in the same direction and want to see the kinds of changes in this country that will lead um, to an end to these wars all over the world, not just the war in Ukraine, because the war in Ukraine is happening. But as Jody says, now you're seeing the propaganda shifting over to China, which I believe is the U.S. main enemy because of the fact that it's uh, now a serious competitor, maybe even a pa has passed economically the United States and the United States cannot give up its hegemony for many, many um, reasons. Uh, um, so I, I, I think that um, what we need to do is build the kind of movement that envisions a society of peace and justice. And even if we have different ideas on tactics and how we do it and what, what is effective and what is not, I think we all agree on that. And that's the basis of a coalition that we have. So I think that's Jody I might happen. disagree on whether. Yeah, I, I just want to say China is not our enemy, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> I agree, China is not our enemy, but <laughs> the U.S. is now focusing its propaganda, trying to make people believe that China is our enemy. Well, one of the things we should always do is when we notice the United States making someone an enemy, we should notice that they're going to do that with our tax dollars and with the very fabric of our society, as we've watched over the last 20 years, it literally shreds the very fabric of our society. But if people care about peace, here is this opportunity on March 18th to really feel the cost of war of the last 20 years. I mean, how many people are dead? How many people are refugees? How much money has been stripped out of the coffers of the needs of the people? And so right now is the time to be in the streets 
please join us on March 18th. Please get out of your comfort zones. This is for the people. This is for the planet. There's no greater contributor to climate change than war. And if we don't stop war, it's over. All the other things don't matter. War is such a great contributor that you have to stop war to make a difference in this drive to climate catastrophe, which we're watching too many people in the world pay enormous prices for. It's killing people. It's destroying communities. So when you feel that, you know, there's the only recognizable feature of hope is action. We're giving you an opportunity to be with some amazing, you know, what's more beautiful than a peace activist? Because that comes from love and that comes from care and that comes from a connection to each other and know that we're connected globally. So come be with us. We're gonna have art projects. We're gonna have music. Of course, we're gonna have dancing and um, it's time to be together. It's time to show that there are people who stand against war and for peace. And we'd love to have you with us. So we, one o'clock, March 18th, outside the White House. We've got about two minutes left. It seems to me that the top three reasons uh, out of dozens and dozens of reasons are the one Jody just said, the environment, the nuclear war risk, which will kill us all even faster, and the impediment that the war creates to global cooperation on any of the non-optional emergencies we've got facing us. So if you find out that somebody's coming on March 18th who you disagree with on something, I do not care. Come anyway, right? Am I right? For sure. Peace, you know, love each other. Joe, remind us uh, where do people go? How do people get involved? Um, well, we'll be setting up in Lafayette Park, right across the, the street from the uh, um, uh, from the White House. You can go to one of the websites, uh, UNAC website, unacpeace.org, or or Code Pink's website, uh, Answers website, or a number of others now that are 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 uh, publishing information on where to go. Um, come together uh, on uh, March 18th. Talk to people. Um, and let's learn how to make a real connection that's going to have the power to change change our society. I, I hope this is the start of a bigger, better global peace movement. Uh, but let's make this one huge. Uh, March 18th, I will be there. Joe Lombardo will be there. Jody Evans will be there. I hope that all of you will. We have been speaking with Jody Evans, who is the co-founder of Code Pink, codepink.org and with Joe Lombardo, who is the coordinator of UNAC, United National Anti-War Coalition, UNACPeace.org. Joe and Jody, thank you very, very much for coming on Talk World Radio. Thank, thank you, David. You. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.